Welcome and hello. This is Caffeine Zombies with Bite Size News. Today is July 12th, 2024, and we'll be going over NATO, population declines, the Ursula's voice transfer becoming reality, and what's going on with Black Trump supporters. Let's jump right in. What's going on in NATO? First, what is NATO? NATO stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and is a military alliance between 32 governments. NATO started post-World War II and was really set up to prevent other major wars from breaking out. Essentially, if you attack one of the NATO member states, you will see retribution from all members. They come to everyone's defense. There's some political motivations as well to ensure the spread and dominance of democracy all over the globe, and some budget requirements to keep NATO flush with the ability to aid its partners. This is one of the reasons why Trump doesn't want NATO around, or strong arms them all the time. The United States pays an outweighed size of the military defense. Other countries do step in, of course, but not in an equivalent amount and are often and have often been below their required payments. In 2018, many member state countries were below their minimum of 2%, and the agreement came up that by 2024, they need to be good on their 2%. Most countries have actually done that, or at least are really close, and they do still have time, of course, because 2024 hasn't ended. Some other countries do contribute more than the 2%, like the United States and Poland, but most do not. The United States, for reference, is about 3.5, slated to be 3.6 next year of their GDP. Um, that said, the United States benefits actually from a low-conflict world, not a high-conflict world, that may spill onto our land, um, a lot more than perhaps the other countries where the fighting is actually happening pretty close. Biden is for keeping NATO going and flush because we continue to win more than many other countries by keeping those conflicts over there instead of over here while Trump wants out or not to come to the defense of someone because they don't hit their 2%, even if they might be close. Whatever your take on that is, it is definitely beneficial to keep NATO going, even if we have to play an overweight role. That also means we get to dictate kind of what is in our favor versus others more as well. Uh, so it kind of goes both ways. During the NATO summit, the U.S. announced a new security package for Ukraine. Zelensky wanted restrictions on long-range missiles lowered so that they could actually fight back uh, against Russia preemptively. There were attempts to influence the crowd to also be less anti-Chinese. Uh, in terms of like negotiations, which of course fell on flat ears because it was coming from Hungary's Victor, Victor um, Obern, uh, and China's a kind of well-known human rights violator. They do make cheap goods, but they also incentivize fentanyl coming into our country. Totally not worth supporting over democracy, the United States, and peace. And Russia talked badly about NATO prepping for a larger expanse of the war. Should Russia gain a stronger foot in Ukraine by putting long-range missiles in Germany? Of course they would, right? Because they don't want to have defenses really in place if they do want to spread. Whew, okay, that's a big one, NATO, right? Plus there's some Biden gaffes in there, but I'm sure you've seen more than a few shorts or TikToks on it already, and I'm not going to rehash those here. The rate at which Earth's population growth is happening is slowing, meaning there's a projected peak of 10.3 billion people in somewhere around 2080. That on its own is not a terribly large concern, but since we need, for the foreseeable future, more people being born into the next generation than the one that makes it into retirement, fund many of our programs, and of course we need to at least break even so the human race continues, the U.S. and other civilizations are actually facing a sooner decline than what the world is looking at, and we're ringing alarm bells a lot earlier because we rely on many of those programs, things like Social Security. Even the health system has a lot of that kind of bottom-up. Healthy people pay into a system where sick people and uh, injured individuals can kind of take out more than they put in. All that aside, I do have an opinion here. So this forward piece, this going forward, is an opinion based upon some facts. Right. Um, this is why I believe that conservatives in the United States have shifted to being so zealous against abortion. They're so pro like the trad wife movement and, of course, uh, eventually trying to get con contraceptives to be illegal. In particular, a person choosing not to have an abortion or a person choosing to um, be a traditional wife, quote unquote, whatever that would mean, um, and a person choosing not to use contraceptives should all be legal to be clear. Now, this is talking about this big movement against it. And in part, it's because they just want babies. They know that whether you want them or not, you need to be having them. 
And the more accessible not having babies is, the more they will need to come up with actually good policies. On the flip side, the liberal side of things, um, it's kind of the same problem, but you might think of this is why there's more open ideas about pathways to citizenship for immigrants, because that also delays the need for workable solutions, as immigrants tend to funnel more money into the social services than they actually pull out. What we definitely need is to look at more of this kind of interesting policies being pushed out these days, like, say, the tuition-free college option. If we look at other models of tuition-free college, like, say, the GI Bill, it returns more money into the system than we pay out. At one point in time, I read a report where it's like $8 per one. Not sure if it's that exact amount anymore, but the idea is that people earn more, thus they pay more back into taxes right, than they would have otherwise. In fact, in some instances, without that college degree, they might not be paying anything into taxes and only kind of taken out of the system, right? So this is exactly why we need kind of policies and thinking like this. There's a lot of stipulations, of course, around something like tuition-free college, where you'll probably need some merit-based process to keep the funding over time so that a person's not just being funded to go to school and failing all the time. But right now, like tuition is a big negative obstacle that delays lots of money going back into the system directly. This is definitely not a settled problem, of course, uh, but we really need to start thinking outside of the box of traditional ways of doing things because that is clearly failing. We're not just going to get a big population boom because we say, start having babies. In science, they also completed the first complete larynx transplant. This is awesome. It actually gave a new voice to a person who lost theirs after they got cancer. This surgery also did more than give a 59-year-old the ability to speak again. They can now also swallow and breathe on their own, making science remain amazing. And let's end on the actual controversial topic. And it really does confuse me. So if you have more answers, please put them in the comments. There's this pretty noticeable trend here in 2024 that black voters are polling more favorably with Trump than they ever have in the past, 2016, and even in 2020. If you believe the conservative media, it's because Trump was better for them than Biden, uh, economically speaking. In part, that actually might be true because minorities tend to suffer from price increases due to those prices increasing, causing more problems with lower income families, um, and there's a large chunk of outweighed proportions of minorities in that lower kind of uh, poverty group. But then there's some really interesting points also about economics between the current and former president, so Biden versus Trump. While in office, Biden has overseen the greatest shrinking in racial wealth divides in 20 years. Unemployment amongst blacks was at its lowest 5.3% under Trump, while it hit 4.8% under Biden, and has actually maintained a lower rate longer in Biden's presidency than in Trump's, even if you just consider pre and post-pandemic time periods. Same with the poverty line, where Biden saw also a slight improvement for inflation-adjusted income as compared to Trump as well, while well, seeing similar trends in falling poverty rates, better under Biden than Trump. Now, this isn't to say that Biden is some kind of, like, white savior for the black, black family out there. That, of course, be silly. Some things stayed the same as it always has been, where blacks and Hispanics continue to see earnings trail whites and Asians in the United States, but that wasn't any different under Trump, nor many presidents for a long, long time, if ever. But just when comparing those two presidents, if those conservative media organizations were showing the numbers, they'd have to admit that Biden has done a better job for blacks, economically speaking, and in fact other minority groups, than Trump did during his presidency. It may not feel that way, of course, because of the greedflation going on by corporations, for frankly anyone, but by the numbers, the old man Biden just has more points than his popularity seems to indicate in those communities. So there's been a pretty good drop off of about, I think, 11 points, 77 down to 66 percent, something around there. Um, if anyone has any kind of additional explanation for that, I would love to hear it because by the numbers, it seems like he should be more popular than he is representatively. All right, talk to you next time.